The Fishing News is brought to you by Shoreline Insurance Agency. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evinrood, Lowrance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2018 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details at thefisherman.com. Going into the weekend, there are no advisories, but always check before you head out on the water. The ocean could be a bit lumpy, so be careful around those inlets. On August 26th, there's the Hook for Heroes Summer Slam raising money for our veterans and first responders. That will be taking place at Scotty's Fishing Station, Point Lookout, New York. Then save the date for September 12th. The Fisherman Surf and Inshore Fishing Show will be at the Huntington Hilton with workshops, seminars, and over 70 vendors. On the East End, Mike at Star Island Yacht Club said the tuna action has been slumping lately, but there are plenty of sharks for those looking for some action, and you don't have to go far for them. Fluke is the best bet for inshore action with lots of quality fish coming from 80 feet of water at Outer Frisbees and also in the vicinity of the Block Island wind turbines. Sea bass fishing has been solid with a lot of nice fish at the Pocketbook and Southwest Ledge. News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin had lock and load action on the Montauk Star and limited out by 11 a.m. with fish to 27 inches. He also won the pool. On the South Shore, my neighbor Rich Figula out of Lindenhurst had some great action fishing the cholera area. He limited out quickly with fluke to four pounds. Nikki Fishing Girl checked in and reported that many of their trips were canceled this week due to all the storms in the area. They did do some fishing in the bay, but caught mostly sea robins and short fluke. Next week, she'll have a full report from the ocean scene. Spoke to Captain Al Lorenzetti, and he reported cleaner water has moved in to the bay. But like Nikki, he went out fishing and caught mostly sea robins and short fluke. He said your best bet is working structure around the reef if you can get out. He also mentioned there's lots of trigger fish and lots of porgies in the area too. Now for the latest action to the west, let's go to Captain Joey Leggio. Thank you, Tim. The report out of Deb's Inlet is the bottom fishing re remains strong. There's tons of porgies to be caught. Sea bass are still there, but now it seems like, you know, mostly smaller ones. But again, you're still getting some nice fish in the mix. Fluke fishing is really good. Uh, I've been fishing AB Reef tight to the wall. The tighter you are to that wall, the better you're gonna, you're gonna catch. Don't be on the wall, because obviously you're gonna lose a lot of rigs, and of course that just makes the tackle stores happy, and not the anglers. But for the fluke fishing, get up on the wall, wait to get to the flat bottom, work those edges tight, using bucktails, high-low rigs, live bait, whatever it may be. There's plenty of fluke there. The trip I did with Dave this week, we had a limit of fluke almost. We had one short of a limit and we had fish to uh, 5.1 pounds, and we also had three, four pounders in the mix on that trip. The, um, the uh, what you would call it, the offshore scene seems like the tuna is crazy. Again, I'm not doing any tuna runs, but all my friends that have been going, it looks like it's a pretty good bite there with a big eye. And this year, it seems like there's a ton of marlin being caught too. Lots of whites, lots of blues. So there's definitely some good offshore action going on. Um, in the bay, it's a little slower, a lot of small fluke are in the bay. Your best bet is heading over to any of those reefs, and those fluke are setting up on all that structure right now, and that's where those fish are going to be. But other than that, that's it. Got a little Frankie out there with me today. Say hi, Frankie. <laughs> so a little take a kid fishing day. It's great to do. But uh, other than that, that's really it for my report. Now we go further west with our newest correspondent, Luke Feeney, out of Jamaica Bay. Hey, guys. Luke Feeney here reporting from the West End in Jamaica Bay and Rockway Inlet area. This week, we have a fluke bite beginning to develop at the Atlantic Beach Reef. As the fluke began to move out of the bay and into the ocean, and into areas such as Ambrose Channel, Cholera Bank, and Atlantic Beach Reef, these areas will come to life with fluke and sea bass. The best way to target these ocean fluke is with the bucktail and a large meat strip. There has been a sheep's head bite going on in Jamaica Bay on pilings near Floyd Bennett and Canarsie Pier surrounding areas. Anywhere from 10 to 15 feet is the hotspot for these sheep's head, using a quarter blue crab and a blackfish jig. This is a very unique opportunity since the sheep's head have not been found in this area in many decades. The porgy bite has been solid both at the Rockway Reef and the Tin Can Grounds near the jetty. The bluefish have returned after mysteriously missing in action for most of the spring and summer. They can be found chasing bait at the surface near Rockway Jetty areas. Late August is always a great time to find big fish in the deeper water. That's it for this week and be sure to get out there and try your luck at some late summer fishing. Until next time, tight lines. Now we go even further west and catch up with Mike Manguel. Hey Tim, hey Fisherman, it's Mike here. For today, August 15th, we fished the Arthur Kill River in Staten Island side and New Jersey side. Fished over the triangle facing the Perth Amboy area. A lot of short flukes out there along with sea robins. Took my son out, had a good time. A lot of uh, shorts, I <laughs> can't deny that, a lot of shorts. 
No keepers. I'll uh, be the first one to say that, no keepers at all. But it was pretty good, a lot of action. Uh, not a lot of boat traffic. Uh, pretty quiet during the week, which is the best time to go, in my opinion. Also, headed a little bit further south, Island Beach State Park, New Jersey, south. Friend of mine caught a nice brown uh, brown shark from the shore on a dead bunker, whole bunker, right from the surf, guys. So if you want to go out and catch a shark, maybe, now's the time. The water's pretty warm, 77 degrees to 79 degrees. Get out there. Porgies are out there. A lot of shore action flukes, and of course, your sea robins. So take care, guys. Adios. Mike wanted me to remind anglers the importance of keeping hydrated during these hot summer days. Drink at least a bottle of water an hour, and you should be okay. On the North Shore, porgies continue to steal a show in Long Island Sound, with limit catches being reported, especially in the western reaches of the Sound. Both day and evening trips are seeing great action. Best bet for stripers now is in the deep water in places like the Middle Grounds or off of Eaton's Neck. Now let's check in with Peter Tarnowski and get the latest from his area. Thanks, Tim. I'm reporting on Port Jefferson this week, where I visited the Middle Grounds, Old Field, and Crane's Neck. And it was a mixed bag of fishing with fluke, porgy and sea bass. They weren't that picky. I was throwing down bucktail with all different colors and it didn't matter. They were hitting on everything. Uh, but the thing is, they were all short. And when I say short, I mean short. Even the sea robins were tiny. So if you're looking to get out there and bend the rod, have a good time, you'll definitely do that. But if you're looking to take home some food, I would order a pizza on the way back. Thanks. Back to you, Tim. Hawaiian Dan is at it again and full of energy. Dan, what's the word? Thanks, Tim. Aloha from Hawaiian Dan of TalkFishTV.com reporting for the Fisherman Magazine. This morning out here at beautiful Centennial Park, Port Jeff Village. Earlier this week, I had a chance to target West Meadow Beach up to Crane's Neck and my pedal drive kayak. I searched Mount Sinai Harbor from the shore. I went through the surf of East Beach and I covered the inshore backwaters in my Sea Eagle inflatable motorized kayak. And let me tell you what, there's definitely no shortage of bait fish. The peanut bunker and the one to two inch size can be found popping everywhere. Bay anchovies and silver size have thrown the snapper bluefish into a complete and continuous feeding frenzy. Yes, the snapper invasion sensation. Sure to bend a rod every single cast. A great opportunity to get out there and stock up on these wonderful bait fish which doormat sized trophy fluke find simply irresistible. Not to mention an opportunity to get off those couches, load the family up, most especially the kids, head for your local body of water and you're guaranteed to bend some rods and put some smiles on those faces. Now, do yourself a favor, pick up a handful of those shiny Castmaster lures and you're certain to score a mixed bag of snappers, porgies, fluke, and who knows what else to catch. Just get out there and fish, will ya? So until next week, this is Hawaiian Dan from TalkFishTV.com reporting for the Fishman. Now back to you, Tim. Aloha. Now let's check in with senior editor Fred Galifaro with the Surf Report. Hey, thanks, Tim. And you know, it is August and we typically don't hear much this month. But we have to be encouraged by the amount and diversity of bait being reported from some areas. Uh, some casters are keeping active by feeding bunker and mackerel chunks to sharks. Uh, there's also some big rays along the beach, occasionally a bluefish. Uh, others have discovered the eating qualities of porgies, catching a lot of porgies on both the north and south shore beaches, while others are just running east and trying to squeeze what bass and blues they can out of Montauk. I spoke to Paul from Paulie's Tackle Shop in Montauk on Wednesday. He said there are good numbers of schoolies on the south side and also from the town beach to Napeague, and I think those schoolies stretch pretty much through East Hampton and South Hampton town beaches. Uh, bucktails are doing most of the damage with those uh, schoolies. Uh, there's blues from 3 to 14 pounds scattered along the north side, uh, taking mostly top waters, particularly pencil poppers. And that crazy fluke bite along Gin Beach has simmered down, but there's still some fluke being picked along with a few blues and small bass from the jetty to shagwan, and that's pretty much between dusk and dawn. Uh, hey, don't forget the surf show that's coming up Wednesday, September 12th at the Huntington Hilton. We got Crazy Al, Bill Wetzel, and Matt Broderick lined up to do some great seminars. Hope to see you there. Until then, Fred Golifaro here for thefisherman.com. The offshore fishing scene has been red hot in the canyons with water temps in the low 80s, catches of yellowfin, big eyes, and marlin are being reported consistently. Now listen to this fish story. Last Thursday, Chris Madonia at a Fire Island Inlet and his crew were fishing the Chicken Canyon for bluefin. His buddy Gary Arnold just finished applying sunscreen and picked up a rod when the rod was yanked out of his slippery hands and in an instant disappeared into the blue water. 
24 hours later, Mike Nolan out of Brick, New Jersey on his boat, the Irish Jig, was also fishing the Chicken Canyon area when his 11-year-old son snagged something strange while jigging. To their surprise, they pulled up a beautiful rod with an accurate reel in pristine condition. And there was still a fish attached. They fought the fish to the boat and it turned out to be a manta ray. They released the manta ray and fished for the rest of the day. When they returned home to port, they contacted Accurate Reels with the serial number. And because the reel was serviced by Accurate, they were able to locate the owner. Now, what's the chances of that? Hats off to Mike and his crew. That's sportsmanship and integrity. If you'd like to be part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we're looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the New York metro and Long Island area. So if you're a captain, a tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact me at libayrat at gmail.com. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Dreamboat Contest. Get out there, catch them up. This is Tim C. Smith for thefisherman.com. Hey anglers, the Fisherman Surf and Inshore Fishing Show is Wednesday, September 12th at the Huntington Hilton. See seminars by the region's best surf and inshore experts. First 500 through the doors receive a goodie bag worth more than the price of admission. Check out the free workshops and see more than 75 vendors with the latest fishing gear. Don't miss this opportunity to get ready for the fall run. Visit thefisherman.com for more information.